Well, as 2023 comes to a close, that doesn't mean we have to stop there. However, as you may or may not have been remembering, I've been mentioning there's still some shows I haven't seen from the remainder of 2023. I'll do that at some point right afterwards. But, however, for today, I decided why not review certain ones that may be a little bit interesting. Our first one is from the last show with Oz Academy that took place this past Saturday on the 30th in Cork and Hall. Play, uh, Pray For Me featuring... Uh, about th uh, two title matches, the Pioneer title and the Tag Team titles, and then the number one contendership for the Oz Academy Openweight title and various other matches as well. We also got Choco Pro with 348. As you know, this is going to be a very interesting week for them because <coughs> they're not stopping from here on out. We're going to keep moving forward with that. And then, of course, we finally ended with Jersey Championship Wrestling with Battle Bowl, which is a very annual tournament or of sorts where they get the ring of the Battle Bowl ring. So we'll see who, what kind of matches will be taking place, and I'll explain more about that. And then, of course, we do the year-end awards from Wrestling Revolver, who won Best who was male, year, uh, male Wrestler of the Year, Female Wrestler of the Year, the whole enchilada on that part. And of course, some news updates, developments that's been going on in the world of pro wrestling. We definitely going to be talking about, such as, of course, several wrestlers. Uh, a wrestler named Ichikawa has announced he's leaving IW, the All Japan Pro Wrestling, and Madeline uh, officially graduates from the uh, the Yoshi Promotion. Diana going freelance, everything else as well. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada, Europe. The UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about various topics such as the wrestlers themselves, promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to get our hands on. We do more news updates in case if I'm not able to put it in here on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself. We also do some more news updates, but on real timing, what's been going on as well. The Unagi Sayaka Watch and special episodes, you'll be getting a whole enchilada for this. But if you got likes, if you guys like what you see, please subscribe to us. So click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool stuff on this channel. But if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment in the description down below. Now, let's begin with our very first review, and this is from the Yoshi promotion. Oz Academy. This is their last show of 2023 with Pray For Me. Now, I recently reviewed their much recent show, Pray For Me in o at Osaka, I think. That's the one that took place. But this one has more matches. The previous one, that one only had four. But we'll see how this one is. Uh, the first one, we have a tag match. We have the members of Ozaki Goon, consistent of Kakeku and Maya Yukihi uh, teaming up. Taking on Karori Yonoyama and Sonoko Kato. But here is the, the big wrinkle on this match. Um, Ozaki Goon is in fact the villainous faction in this promotion. And they have their own referee that would in fact make sure that this match goes in their favor. And you guys will be surprised. Uh, it's run, but it's the referee is Mio Shirai. 
Yes, folks, if you guys ask, this is Io Sky's older sister. She's a referee. So she's been refereeing as a member of Osaki Goon, making sure their matches go in their favor. But, however, of course she was going to help out Osaki Goon no matter what. You know, doing the one, two. That did not work. But, however, that didn't help at all for her because it was Kato who picked up the win by pinning Maya Yukihi. And it was over from there. But, however, the other members of Osaki Goon are not having it one way or the other. But... It is what it is. <coughs> Our next match is a three-way match for the Oz Academy Pioneer Championship. Um, Izuki Itsu um, Aoki defends her belt against Hakino and Ram Kaicho. So basically, you have a very interesting variety of wrestlers. I mean, uh, Akino has been one of the top stars in Oz Academy. Of course, uh, Ozaki Goon's number one hit list, if you guys might know that. But Ram Kaicho, you know she is. She's the kind of person who that relies on her speed and other things that help her out. But unfortunately, this match ended when Akino applied a her karana on Aoki. And she becomes the brand new um, Oz Academy Pioneer Champion. Now, our next match is a tag team match we have. Uh, Momoka Anazono teaming up with her longtime tag partner Mei Shruga. They take on the very interesting pairing of Zones from Evolution, and she teams up with Lady Destroyer Hiroyo Matsumoto. Now, recently, I know that Zones and Matsumoto have teamed up on certain occasions, but it seems like they're they have been paired up very well. Like they can get along. I mean, both of them. Are very powerhouses but however do they match the craziness the how do i say not the craziness the the attendant um unorthodox from both momoka and mei Shruga? well i always say momoka is a terror in the ring because she's i mean she does things that you probably wouldn't expect her to do she acts like a child but it's very effective but however that didn't do any well now, as you know, both of these ladies are high speedsters. That always been reliable. However, when Matsumoto thought that this match was going to be won by zone, somehow Mei Shruga was able to reverse the the roll into her favor when she pinned zones. When Matsumoto realized what just happened, it was too late. I mean, I have to say, <coughs> pretty fun match. Now, this is... In um, number one contendership survival style match, we have wrestlers that will be competed as a number one contender for the Oz Academy Openweight Championship. Now, this belt is the top title of the promotion. Um, so basically, uh, we have Kahuko versus Miu Momono versus Sayori Inoue versus Rina Yamashita versus Ryu Mizunami versus uh, versus Tsubasa uh, Karagani. Now, interesting enough, this is how it goes down. One person will be eliminated. Whoever is left standing is the one that will be receiving an, a number one contendership for the Oz Academy Openweight Championship. Now, of course, certain members, the members of Ozaki Goon, were going to show up to help Sayori Inoue to pick up to win this match. However, um, Friends of the other competitors decided to give a helping hand, knowing they can't let Ozaki Goon try to win this one, which was very helpful. But I can tell you how this one ended. We had Mew Momono <coughs> and, of course, Ryu Mizunami as the last two competitors while everyone else was eliminated. But it was a sunset flip by um, Mew Momono that pin Ryu Mizunami. Mizunami is not happy with it. But I was so surprised that Miyu Momono was the one who win. Reason is this because recently Miyu Momono was the the AAAW champion and lost the belt to Mayomi Ozaki, the leader of Ozaki Goon and the one who runs Oz Academy. I'm sure this is her way of saying, you took my belt, I'll take one of yours. And that is the open weight title. But however, she has to content with Akino who is, in fact, also the champion. So that's going to be one thing that's going to be clear. Now, however, our next match, 
we have Oz, the Oz Academy uh, tag team titles. We have Team 200 Kilograms, you and Shihiro Hashimoto taking on Jack Rock Yokota and Mayumi Ozaki. So basically, this is a very interesting development. Now, however, because of Mayumi Ozaki's villainess, she would try to get help from outside the ring <coughs> or take the fight outside. However, of course, Hashimoto and you would use their strength in order to pick up the win. But however, Ozaki Goon applied the red mist onto you, pinned her one, two, three. But however, you was not happy that this match ended in that way. I wouldn't be surprised if somehow they get another shot of them some point in the future. But we will see when that day comes. So I think that's pretty much it with Oz Academy. I believe it's time for Joko Pro. All right, Choco Pro with 348. Now, this is the much, this is day three out of their show of the week. Uh, we have Chico Shikawa opening up the show, telling everybody of what matches are going to expect, the whole enchilada on that part. So, our first match, we in fact have Antonio Honda teaming up with Minoru Fujita. They take on Balin Aki and, of course, uh, Toto Owashi. So a very interesting development. However, there was a certain case where, if you guys know this, Owashi was a former sumo wrestler, so he applied a little bit of the sumo um, style of his. The <coughs> well, kind of convinced the wrestlers to, how do I say, how about we sumo wrestle? Well, of course he was going to win, but later, for some odd reason, Owashi told Balanaki, to get down in position to do some sumo wrestling, but however he did, but he didn't actually pull it off. It's like I'm not play here to play games, but and didn't do any wealth <coughs> at all for Owashi. But however, they had to focus back on Honda and Fujita because they were not going to play games either. But Balanaki was able to pick up the win when he applied the body diving splash off the window. Well, not a high window, but mostly level floor window we're on to honda to pick up the win now this next match was a very interesting one they would teamed up recently recently like what back in um two at 346 i believe yes 346 against the best bros and that match ended in a time limit draw however now they're teaming up well the now they're facing off each other Chon Shiru and Masahiro Takanashi. I have to say, these two really did not hold any punches one way or the other. However, they do have that determination to win at any way possible. I mean, I know how slick and clever Takanashi can be. Chon Shiru, well, he's very creative of what he does. But of course, there were moments where both men will think exactly what the other's thinking. But unfortunately, this match ended in a draw. Not a time limit draw. A draw due to the fact they both <coughs> got pinned at the same time with their shoulders down. And of course, that's how it ended. But it didn't seem like it affected them. I mean, they seemed like they were evenly matched. I think they were well aware of it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if those two team up permanently or, or partially for a shot of the tag titles. That's something that could be a possibility. But, however, that's another conversation for another time. Now, our main event, we have a six-woman tag match. Team number one, Miya Yatsuba, Tokiko Kihara, and Sayaka. Now, this is the first time that Miya teams up with um, the fourth generation of wrestlers. These, uh, Tokiko and Sayaka, were both trained by Ami Sakura. However, they're facing the the um, the veterancy. We got Sayaka Obihiro, who also was who was trained by Emi Sakura, Mei Shiruga, another student of Emi Sakura, and of course the queen herself, Emi Sakura. But of course, you probably would have expected <coughs> this match to go to finish off where it's Mia Yatsuba and um, 
and any sakura. Well, it did not go exactly like that. But however, it was Mei Shuga and Tokikahara. I mean, Tokiko applied her striking kick technique on Mei, but it didn't took any effect. But however, Mei was able to pick up a victory by pinning Tokiko. Now, keep in mind, Mi Mia Yotsuba is currently going to be facing Emi Sakura. So she better be well prepared what's going on. But we know that Mei Shruga will be prepared herself since she will be, in fact, in in the event at the Got to Move show against Miyu Amasaki. So we'll see where that leads. Now, the Jonkin tournament, this one was a very interesting thing to watch. But I can tell you that this ended with Sayaka Obihiro winning the piece of chocolate. And it was over like that. So, the year for Choco Pro ended in this fashion. I can't wait to see what they're going to do for the next two days after that. So, I will be reviewing those two as well. So, um, I think that's it with Choco Pro. I believe it's time to move on with our final review, JCW Battle Bowl. Okay, JCW, Jersey Championship Wrestling Battle Bowl. This is the last show of 2023 for them. This took place prior before the um, the Aftermath show. I think the Aftermath, yeah. The Aftermath show with JCW. However, now, if you guys are unfamiliarized with the Battle Bowl, we'll explain to you how it goes. There'll be several wrestlers that will be picked up, and they will be turned into a makeshift team. Now, the, team, the tag team winners will be go on into the main event in a battle royale. However, the makeshift teams are picked up by a Turnbull um, ball. Basically, their name will be picked out from that, and they'll be calling out. However, there will be times where, of course, if there's regular tag teams, they will team up or those or like, like that. So there, it happened before. I saw this in the last year's one, but we'll see. So <coughs> <coughs> let's get cracking with the first match. We have Jay Lyons teaming up with Donnie Primetime. Their opponents is Tarzan and Jay Bojan. Uh, you may remember Bojan from? Um, what was it? Oh, yeah, MLW's um, Bumaye Fight Club. But the match was okay. However, Donnie Prime seems like he was okay with the idea of teaming with Jay Lyons. I mean, Jay Lyons, we know he had teamed up with other people in the past. But, however, um, how will this work for them from both sides well the, all they got to do is learn to trust each other but in the end it was the lion salt by um jay lions onto Bo uh jay bojan <coughs> bojan in order to pick up the win so they advance into the into the, rump, the finals next up we have austin luke uh teaming up with mr danger now i'm not Familiarize with Mr. Danger, but their opponents is a very interesting one. We have Rico Gonzalez take, teaming with Bobby Flaco. So, um, not much of, well, this one was a very interesting because both these men are Latinos. Rico, uh, Mexican, um, Flaco, Puerto Rican. But, however, this <laughs> team dynamic with Austin Luke and uh, Mr. Danger was different. However, I was fully unaware that now that Wasted Youth as you know, a uh, really good tag team are now a stable, and Austin Luke is a member. But it seems like it worked in out in uh, very well because Mr. Danger applied a 450 splash onto um, Rico and onto Flacco and picked up the good win, and they advanced. Next up, a very interesting match that was set up. Uh, you can call it coincidence or fate. Now, if you guys are fans of JCW, then you guys may know there's been some trouble in Paradise with the guys of Young, Dumb, and Broke, uh, Griffin McCoy, who felt that he's been underappreciated, uh, overlooked, because of Jordan Oliver, who is the current JCW champion, uh, started a fit with him and began to start it. But however, the other members within the group started having problems with Del, um, Ellis Taylor, sided with Griffin McCoy and asked for Charlie Tiger, he still remained with Jordan Oliver. But for some odd reason, this thing happened with them. This match became a young, dumb, and broke showdown. 
Alice Taylor teaming up with Griffin McCoy, um, Jordan Oliver teaming up with Charlie um, uh, Charlie Tiger, which was very interesting, you know. But however, of course, there was some moments where Griffin McCoy will do whatever it takes to prove once and for all why he is the top dog. How he felt a lot of jealousy towards Oliver, and it did paid out when he pinned. Oliver, when Oliver was so concerned for the well-being of Charlie Tiger. And, th of course, McCoy actually took that, uh, took advantage of it and pinned him. But, however, pinning him could potentially put him in a conversation for the JCW title once again. He did challenge Oliver, but lost. <coughs> Next match, we have a very interesting match. We have one called Manders teaming up with Bam Sullivan to take on Jordan Cruz and um, Sawyer Wreck. Now, of, for some odd reason, it seems um, Manders and Sullivan got along great. They're two powerhouses dudes, but Jordan Cruz, who I've seen many times here locally in my hometown, um, I don't know if he can work with um, Sawyer Wreck, but they did their best as possible. But unfortunately... Cruz got lariat by Manders to pick up the win. Now, our next match, we have Isaiah Broner and Joshua Bishop, who is the pre one of the previous Battle Bowl winners and recently began a feud with, had a, a feud with Alec Price, who won last year's Battle Bowl, is in this. So people should be concerned. However, they have to contempt with their opponents with Big Ven and Jocelyn Navarro. So I wasn't too sure how this was going to go, but however, it was Bishop, uh, Joshua Bishop, who pinned Navarro to proceed into the finals after, of course, um, p uh, <coughs> uh, pinning him. Next up, we have Cold Radic teaming up with Tara Zeth. Now, Cold Radic has been very flustered that he wasn't picked the entire time, but this time he did. They faced on against Emerson Jane from uh, Pro Wrestling Eve. Uh, her partner is Daiju Wakamatsu. Now, unfortunately, Wakamatsu was supposed to be in, in the in the aftermath show. However, he due to his scheduled flight, he was unable to make it due to this. But it did work out for him one way or the other, participating in this. But I did like how Emerson Jane and, of course, Wakamatsu got along great. They seemed like they got everything. But, however, it was Jane who pinned Tara Zepp, and they proceed into the next round. Next up, we have Brandon Toon teaming up with Broski Jimmy Lloyd. They take on Hunter Drake and member of the Wasted Youth, uh, Ma Dylan McKay. Now, McKay is very good friends with, of course, Jimmy Lloyd, but he can't stand the fact that he is <coughs> In this mess with the so-called indie god and the king of the death match. Which I'm waiting for Acticus Coer just to break him in half. I'm waiting for that moment to happen. But on several occasions of this match, Jimmy Lloyd applied the radio silence on two occasions. But it did help out the second time when he took out uh, uh, Hunter Drake and won the match. Now, a final match before we get to the, to the last one. Beastman teams up with uh, big, uh, Kurt and their opponents and Shane Mercer and a very uh, interesting wrestler, Sleepy Ed. Now, I don't know who this guy is, but oh my God, the entirety of this show. While everybody was waiting to be called their names during being picked, Sleepy Ed was, in fact, sleeping the entire time. You can see that in the monitor. People are trying to say, is he really asleep? Don't wake him up. Don't wake him up. So, like like that. And, of course, MOJ, <coughs> who we've seen in GCW, goes, and as for our last very uh, participant, someone please wait, go wake him up. Sleepy Ed. So, when here comes Mercer, you can see clearly, he comes out, he decided to wake up Sleepy Ed. So basically, he did. He was like, <laughs> was "Like, what's going on?" So basically, he was a, he was falling asleep. I mean, it felt like that whole thing, like Wendy Chu. But to be honest with you, 
Wendy Chu does it way better. I mean, really fun and interesting. But in the end, it was Shane Mercer who picked up the win when he used Slippy Ed as a weapon onto Big Kirk and proceed. So that's how it rolls up. So I thought it was interesting. But however, everybody comes out. They were introduced for the la the Battle Bolt match. And of course, as always, Sleepy Ed was the last one. They called him out three times. He comes out with his little blanket going, Ugh, uh. So basically, there's that. However, of course, the one interesting thing is, I can skip ahead for all of you. The last three were, in fact, a two-on-one scenario. We have Griffin McCoy and Alex Taylor taking on a previous Battle Bowl winner, Joshua Bishop. So <coughs> Joshua Bishop, who's determined to become another winner, a second time winner. Well, this time he did not. It was Griffin McCoy who does it. Of course, there's no doubt about my mind. Griffin McCoy will be gunning for another shot of the JCW title, but we will see what happens. But he is now the winner of this year of the final of 2023's Battle Bowl ring. So we'll see what happens next time. So I think that's it pretty much what we have. So let's move on with <coughs> the Wrestling Revolver Year End Awards. Okay, as you know, like I did with Impact Wrestling, I there was the Year End Awards. Now we're doing the Wrestling Revolver Year End Awards. Now... I did mention this. If you guys are fans of it, they did a voting session that ended exactly close to uh, midnight. However, um, let's get cracking. Who won Male Wrestler of the Year? And that is Jay Chris. I mean, Jay Chris, I have seen him. Many people normally would associate him as a tag team specialist with his brother, Dave Chris, who we haven't seen for quite some time. The last thing I remember with Dave Chris, he... What his name was mentioned in the Speaking Out movement back in 2020. We haven't heard from him for quite some time. But uh, Jay Chris deserved it because he has shown what he can do now that he's no longer as a tag team competitor. But as a single competitor, he has shown tremendous talent. Female Wrestler of the Year. And I think many of you may agree with this one. Billy Starks. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, Billy Starks has been everywhere. I mean... She was still in high school when she was wrestling. I mean, people talked about her, even that story about her. Um, if you guys know this, people thought when she, they saw her bruises, they thought that she was <laughs> being abused at, his, at her own home. But she had to tell people the truth. No, I'm actually a wrestler. So, yes. Of course, she had made a huge impact in Ring of Honor. You know, with that storyline with Athena and all this. I'm, I'm waiting to see what else she's going to do. But... I have to say she deserved this award. Match of the year. Speedball Mike Bailey versus Roderick Strong. Now, I cannot recall if I saw this. I mean, because Wrestling Revolver does one show a month. But, yeah, I think I could, I think I could see it. But I may have to rewatch that one or the other. Tag Team of the Year. The Rascals. I can't say if I agree with that or not, but uh, they have been a very good team uh, late. I mean, since Zachary Wentz, as you know, he is currently, since Zachary Wentz returning to the Independence, and as for Wesley, who was known as uh, Dez, actually still uh, with NXT, that sort of thing. But yeah, then we have moment of the year when Jay Chris won the world title. So I have to say yes, I could agree. Then finally, show of the year. I wasn't too sure to, who to pick, but uh, this one was won by the last show of 2023, season finale. Um, don't know why. <laughs> I may have to rewatch that again, but I have to say, very interesting choice. I mean, I do agree with male wrestler, female wrestler. That's about it, but yes. So if you guys think differently, let me know on the comments down below. So right now, let's move on with, of course, um, news updates.
Okay, welcome to our news update. So let's get started right now. Uh, you may know this Yoshi wrestler, Madeline, uh, from World Woman Pro Wrestling, Diana, or just simply. Um, it was announced a couple of months back that Diana, uh, that uh, Madeline announced that she got married, that by the end of this year that she will be no longer with the promotion, Diana. She'll be going to freelancing due to the fact that she is moving to another city due to her marriage. Of course, there was an understanding about that, but however, she wanted to finish off the year. And she just recently had her final match with Diana. Uh, she teamed up with her classmates, Nanami and Aruka Umesaki, to take on Kakiko Sekiguchi, um, who else? A few, uh, two others. But however, um, of course, Madeline is happy that she gets to finish this year as a full-time member of Diana with her teammates, but of course, to inch, uh, to, how do I say, clarify, no, she is not retiring, she made that perfectly clear, just because she's graduating from Diana doesn't mean that she's retiring, she will be wrestling, but it's still unclear where, we don't know what promotions she will be booked, I'm sure there will be a lot of variety of wrestlers that will be booking her, promotions that will be in fact booking her, but We'll see what happens. But she did say that she will meet again with Diana somewhere down the line. Now, speaking of wrestlers leaving their promotions, um, if you guys know this promotion by Takamichinuku, uh, just tap out, they announced that Ren Ayabe will be leaving the promotion starting by the end by the end of this year and by start of 2024. Uh, he'll be a freelancer, I'm not sure. But however... He is the current GTO Openweight Champion, and he will continue on until later on this year. Uh, however, they haven't. I know that Ren Ayabe has recently been participating with All Japan Pro Wrestling, teaming with Shuji Ishikawa. Uh, I will talk about him in a bit, you know. Uh, but we'll see what happens where Ren Ayabe goes from here on out. But I have to say, he was rather impressive where we're at. Now, as you know, Camille has finished up already with NWA. She is now going to be officially by starting in 2024 as a free agent. And I'm asking all of you, so you guys can leave a comment down below on this one. Uh, where do you want to see her next? I mean, I think my logical choice I would love to see her in is either, well, TNA would be one, like my top pick for that. And second pick... <coughs> Possibly, well, I don't know about AEW, but I would like to see her in Ring of Honor mostly. But yes, that's where I would like to see her as well. Now, speaking of another free agent, we have Alex Hammerstone, who is now going to be a free agent. And same thing with you guys. Where would you like to see him next? Uh, promotion Kitsune Women's Pro, uh, Pro Wrestling. As you know, I announced that they will be doing another show. Um, this coming on March in LA called Kampai. And they announced for Nag Nagisa Nozaki making her debut. So I have to say, awesome timing. Now, um, the last thing I talked about, want to talk about, is Shuji Ishikawa. Now, Shuji Ishikawa has been part of the uh, uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling promotion for a number of years. However, he has announced that he's leaving the promotion. Um, no indications that he's retiring, but it was later revealed by uh, Tokyo Sports, I believe, that there has been issues towards him and the president of the company. Now, nobody knows exactly what's going on. Not, not of details or clarifications have been made. However, Tokyo Sports did mention that since Ishikawa is leaving the, the company... There was one thing that they never got clarified is the potential partnership with All Japan and NXT. Like, this one is kept quiet. Now, <coughs> normally, we don't know for sure if there will be a partnership. I mean, I know some of you WWE loyalists out there would say, we definitely need a partnership with another promotion. I mean, yes, I get that part. But I will be talking about that in a, in a separate discussion video. So... We'll see about that and down the future. But for right now, this is all we have for that. So 
Well, I don't know what the problems they're having with the president of the company. Um, I don't know where Ishikawa will land after this. I wouldn't be surprised if he would just be a freelancer from here on out. That is something. I do know that Ishikawa has been helping Suwama with the Evolution project where they have the Yoshi's wrestlers train under them. That's something we could see down the line. But we'll see what happens from here on out. So I think that's pretty much it. So let's just call it a day. Well, as you know, we'll be starting 2024 real soon. But however, I haven't decided yet. But I decided, what the hell, let's do all the entirety of the GCWs that I missed out for the remainder of this month of December. And put them all as a start of 2024. You know, just to get everything all worked out for everybody. I think I missed out on the highest moments, special holidays, GCW versus Zone 23, uh, oh yeah, the, the Nick Gage Invitational, and of course, the latest one, Aftermath. So let's do all of that. Why not? What the hell? Let's do all of it. So I think that's pretty much it right now for everybody. So I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you. I do so. Goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.